Romans 8. In the spirit of freedom, I want to look at this first few verses of Romans 8. To study Romans is to really uh, take a real good look at some good theology from um, the first chapter Paul begins to build an argument that relates to our relationship with God being broken because of sin and that argument, it leads a crescendo in chapter 8. He builds theologically, masterfully, um, through chapters 1 and 8. So when we get to 8, uh, he, he's really proved his point. We have a sin problem. All of sin, the wages of sin is dead. We sin knowing it's wrong, we have sin nature. He deals with all this. He presents Christ to us in, in verse, in chapter 8, as it relates to this independence, as it relates to what Jesus uh, did on Calvary for us. So verse 1 in this text, in light of everything that has happened, uh, even the sin struggles we all deal with, uh, he ends chapter 7 really in a place of woe is me, in a place of what a wretched situation, what Lord have mercy if you would. He comes to verse 1 of chapter 8, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do and that it was weakened by sinful nature, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful man to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in sinful nature or sinful man in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us do not live according to sinful nature but according to the spirit independence from sin in light of sinful nature in light of everything that we have going on in our lives jesus is the solution the lack of condemnation that was designed or set aside for those who transgress God. This goes all the way back to Genesis chapter 2. Wages of sin is dead. Adam and Eve sin, they died. How do we deal with that? What is the response to sin nature? What is the response to us not being good enough? The answer is Jesus. I love the way Paul put this together because the law was given by God through Moses to Israel, if you will, to keep them on, on pace, to keep them on track, to make sure they're doing what God wanted done in light of the fact that they had sin nature. But Paul literally says before this that the very thing that was designed to keep them on track kept them off track. <laughs> because... Getting it right was the problem. When Stevie was dealing with the foundation issue, great word. If, if you have cracks in your walls, the walls ain't the problem. The walls are cracking because of foundation. And Paul says the law is not the problem. Your nature is the problem. So trying to adhere to the law when you have a nature problem is the problem. The solution to your nature problem is Christ. And, and, and Christ, he, he comes, as Paul says, in the form of sin nature. And he literally defeats sin within the context of sin nature. That is the, the, just the awesomeness of the argument that he makes. When he says, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life has set me free. There's that freedom from the law of sin and, and death. I don't, 
our way of getting into relationship with the Father is not based on adherence to the law. That was one of the arguments that was going on, even in the early church. The Jews tried to do it, they couldn't. And the Jews who became Christians, some of the Judaizers was telling other Gentile uh, Christians that, hey, you have to adhere to the law of Moses. And, and this is what Paul, the law, trying to get to God through law is the problem because you have sin nature. The more laws God gives us, the more sinning we're going to do because sin nature doesn't care. Sin nature goes around breaking laws. So now getting to God is not based on adherence to the law. It's based on Christ, faith in him. Which, of course, doesn't mean we go around doing what we want to do. But it does mean that we are set free from having to obey the law to get to him by walking in his spirit based on faith in his son. The law couldn't do this. Paul says, verse 3, the law was powerless to do this in that it was weakened by sin nature. God did it. Send the son in the likeness of sinful man and for or a, a sin offering. And so he, he condemned sin in sin nature. Jesus fixed it in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully made in us. In other words, there was something that the law required us to do that we could not do. What Jesus did was fulfill the requirements. There's a redemption. Jesus fulfilled the requirements. Jesus paid the bill. What the law was calling humanity to do, we could not do because of sin nature. Jesus did it. And Jesus said, now that I've done it, it has been done. That is the righteous requirement that the law had. It was fulfilled by Christ, and now we live in that because we live in him. It's like when you go to a restaurant and everybody eating. Who gets the bill? Jesus does. So everybody at the table gets to eat free because of, well, y'all not feeling that today. <laughs> y'all not feeling that. You're going to feel it next time you go to the restaurant and everybody say, Mac, you got the bill. You're going to feel it. The righteous requirement was met by Jesus. But here's the story. Here's the story. This is the part that, about this beautiful story that sometimes we miss. Paul denotes this. He says, who do not live according to sin nature but according to the spirit. Living according to the spirit does not mean we're not going to sin. Living according to, because we still have sin nature. Being a believer doesn't mean your nature change. I'm so sorry. Matter of fact, I've learned as I've studied the scripture, you know, he who increases knowledge increases sorrow. The more I study my Bible, the more I realize how much a sinner I am. Y'all see what I'm talking about? So being a believer doesn't mean my nature changes. Being a believer says what has changed is the relationship between me and the Father based on faith in the Son. That's what has changed. So even though I'm a man who still has sin nature, I'm walking according to the Spirit. Lord, what would you have me do? I'm not actively working to facilitate sin nature. I'm actively working trying to facilitate the Spirit of God through study, through Scripture, through prayer. Still falling along the way. Yes. But when I fall, I get back up. Today is Independence Day. This is why you and I are free. Not free from the tyranny of what might be going on in another country. Not from the freedom of tyranny of, of even what happened in this country with slavery. No, that's not the freedom I'm talking about. That's not the freedom that Paul is referencing. We are free from the law of sin and death. Meaning, even though you have sin nature, and even though I have sin nature, I don't have to worry about that penalty because Jesus paid it. I don't have to worry about that bill because Jesus paid it. I am free from that. So that's why Paul starts this text by saying there is no condemnation. The bill has been paid. Paid in full. There's why there's so much joy that we should have in us. You know, uh, I think that was me and Matt talking this week. Uh, uh, and we was kind of just discussing how you ever met a just, a just a mad Christian? Just mad all the time. Depressed all the time. And, and, and I don't, hey, we all have struggles, so forgive me, family, but really, why are you depressed? Because you're going to be in heaven? Is that why you're mad all the time? Because you just died for you? See, see, this is what happened when we're still trying to walk according to the world, when, when we're still getting wrapped up in what's going on down here rather than what Jesus did for us. 
All of us going to have drama. We're going to have problems. We're going to have sickness. We're going to have death. We're going to have issues. Absolutely. Welcome to earth. That was one of the things I told my daughter. You know, they, they get older. You know, everybody here has a good adult children. And your adult children start figuring this thing out. Well, daddy this. I remember when Monica got uh, to uh, Abilene and, and, and she would have to ration money. She'd go to Walmart. Daddy, I can't believe these prices. I'm like, those prices been there. <laughs> this is new to you, not new to me. Now you know what's going on. When you thought your daddy was just a human ATM machine. You see what I'm talking about? So my premise is we get to the point where we recognize as, they, as we grow up, it's been this way. So being on earth says we're going to have problems, but being in Christ says we're going to have grace. So the road to heaven is littered with tears. We're going to cry. We're going to hurt. We're still going to get cancer. We're still going to get Alzheimer's. We're still going to have financial issues. We're still going to get fired. We're going to get divorced. We're going to have all those problems because we're human. But at the end of the day, those problems don't demand who we are. They don't make who we are. Who we are is made by faith in Christ. We are free even though these things go on because of what Jesus did. So just as we pop firecrackers and say, hey, it, it, thank, thank you for the independence. When I was coming in, uh, there was a flag and some young people walking down. Oh, that, that's fine. I have no issue with that. But while the Christian church is a part of a country that's, that, that, that deals with independence, okay, on the 4th of July, that's great. There's a greater independence. And it happened not on the 4th of July, it happened on Calvary's cross. So we can say there's, there's no condemnation. As I wrap this up, I want to open up a dialogue here. What does it mean to you? One of the powerful things about walking together is getting different ideals, different perspectives. A lot of times in our church cultures, the man of God, the, the, the preacher, the pastor, we listen, we listen, we listen, but I want to listen. I want to know what God has shared with you so I can learn, we can learn from you, we can learn from each other. That is the powerful power of a Christian fellowship, in my opinion. When I think of this text, I just shared it with you. Thank you for listening. When you see this text, what's on your spirit? That's an open question, an open dialogue. What does the independence given by Jesus mean to you? If somebody was to ask you what freedom is. What is freedom in Christ? What does it mean? What is that testimony? What is that proclamation coming from within that the Holy Spirit has put in you? What does that mean? What does it mean to be free? He who the Son frees according to the Scripture is free indeed. What does that mean to you? How does that move you? Does it, how does it touch your soul? How does it give you peace? How does it give a, a, a joy even in the midst of a bad situation? What does it mean? What does it do there? One more. For me, freedom in Christ is not only a feeling of just, I don't know how to explain it. So, okay, um, being around a group of people and not being tempted by things because I'm free. I don't, I, I don't have those chains on me no more. I could be around the drink and I could be around that. And I don't have to worry about, man, I don't want to slip or fall into this and then do something I'm ashamed of because now it's just like, why even do that? I could be sober-minded and now I can facilitate something greater than me. I have a message to bring greater than what did you watch last week? Now it's just like, man, I got something that can set you free, and I want to share it. Not only by speaking it, I want you to look at me and see that I'm living. And for me, freedom it is just that. Um, I, as I was reading uh, in that same text, um, because the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus sets you free from the law of sin and death, what the law could not do since it was weakened by the flesh, God did 
And so an example that I was given a while back is um, the law of gravity says what goes up must come down. So that's the law. But freedom shows us the law of aerodynamics where a plane can go against the law of gravity. And now I can do things before that I didn't, wasn't able to do because I'm in Christ. So now I'm no longer bound to the ground. I'm able to go as high as I, I want to in Christ as long as I'm connected. So I have the freedom to be a base or I can go higher. Um, before that, I was just stuck to the ground and I was just walking. But why is that? Why? This is good stuff. What is it about a plane that gives it the ability to break the laws of gravity? Don't look at that. It's the engine. Yeah. Yeah. So what you're saying is, based on your analogy, that the engine that gives us the authority to break the laws of sin nature is God. So that be the spirit. Are you getting it? The spirit. <laughs> and that's the thing what Paul says. Yeah. You know, that's why he says there at the end of verse number five, uh, talking about it being fully met. There's a requirement that Jesus made. It's being fully met in us. That's the sanctification process. Who do not live according to the sin nature, but according to the spirit. It's, it kind of reminds me of the song, uh, Pinocchio. No strings on me. I'm free now. You know, the world had a hold of me. And I had to please the world. And I had to please people. But now it's like, there's no strings on me. God, God cut those and he set me free. Now I can move about and function in a way that I didn't used to before because God deposited his spirit in me and showing me things that are not worldly but are heavenly. That, that's what it means to me to be free. And to experience freedom in Christ is to not only have no condemnation but not to be chained down to a desire because if we walk in the spirit we won't fulfill the desire of so that's one thing I'm learning as well, just to be in that liberty of the spirit. That's what that means. Yeah. Spirit centric rather than human nature or simple nature centric. Good stuff. Thank you, Shane. Thank you. Something that I'm teaching. Absolutely. Anyone else? supposed to make sense. We're not supposed to be understood like that. Uh, we're different in the world out of uh, set apart. Don't be conformed to the world. Be transformed. Renewing of your mind that you may be able to prove you know, that, that thing that God wants to demonstrate that there's definitely freedom there. The freedom to, I like the way you, you know, talked about it, uh, being around people that are doing this, that, and the other, and you feel free not to do it. It's okay, so if y'all want to do it, I'm not judging you, that's you, that's cool. Do it, do the thing. We can all enjoy one another, but I'm free not to do it, and I'm, I'm okay not doing it, and the fact that I'm not doing it, I'm free. You know, I'm not compelled. I don't feel any kind of, because I'm free. Definitely, definitely. And, and we definitely have to be that way as we go through peer pressure of thing, um, wanting to facilitate relationships with people who are not in Christ. Hey, that's a thing. Uh, but, but we're free. We're free to love those that hate us. We're free to forgive those that do us wrong. We're free to let stuff go. Um, we're free to look at bad scenarios through a positive lens. I've been talking about that on Frank Connect a lot. Everything Again, we all give us stuff in life, every one of us. But God gives us the authority to look at a bad situation in a good way. Perfect example is Jesus Christ. He looked at the crucifixion. If I be lifted up, I will draw. He looked at being nailed to a cross in a good way because he had the authority to do so 
no matter what we're going through in life, we have the authority, if we choose, we have the authority to look at a bad situation in a good way. We never know what God is working out in our lives, ever. And, and Lord have mercy, sometimes we're so into our own will, our own agenda, this is something else that Jesus teaches, not my will, but yours be done. We have to let God do his thing. And he's gonna do it in his time, in his 400 years, Israel was in that situation in Egypt. You know, and we could say, why did it take 400 years? We could say, even in America, why did that take 400 years? I can't tell you why God does things in this time. I just can't. I can tell you his, his, he is eternal, so his view of time is just a little bit different from ours. I was 70 years or so, it flashes. He's been looking at any and everything since there was a thing. So, of course, 400 years to God is not going to mean the same thing he does. It means to us, he, he's greater than generational, which is why you can tell Abraham he's going to do some stuff with his kids, 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 kids that Abraham ain't ever going to see because God is looking at what's going to happen hundreds of years later as if it's already happening. He will allow you and I to go through some stuff that we won't understand for years, but he understands it. And we have to trust that he knows what he's doing while we're waiting for him to manifest that thing in our lives. We have the freedom to trust him. Anyone who's not Stevie, not good. But let's pray. Father, we're thankful for the opportunity to be free. To have a mentality, an understanding even, that whoever the Son frees is free indeed. To, to have this belief system, this confidence that we're not condemned even though we have sin nature because what the law required that we couldn't do because of sin nature, Jesus accomplished. And we, because we sit at the table of fellowship with him, he pays that bill, we eat. In response to that, we live in his spirit, walk in his spirit, even though we still have sin nature. That, that is an awesome freedom. And we can only hope and pray as we really wrap our minds around the power of such a thing that it, it does encourage us and lead us to walk in, in his spirit, to allow the Holy Spirit to sanctify us, to allow us to be and walk and do and live in a way that would help, uh, have others, call others to want to live like that. Not because we've mastered it, not because we're better than anybody else, just because of what Jesus did. If we can let our light shine before men in such a way that they may see our good works that gives you glory, then what a wonderful way to live. Even as John the Baptist noted, Father, may we decrease so Jesus can increase. So others can know the freedom that we know. We thank you for spiritual independence, the, the independence of fear, the independence from death, spiritual death, the independence of, of that sting, the independence of being worried about what's going to happen when we leave this place and go to the eternal. The freedom of being concerned about what Judgment Day is going to look like. We do, we do understand. We have to give an account all the all these must bow. We're going to have a conversation one day. But we just believe by faith that at the end of things, our response to you will only be Jesus. Father, we have nothing there. There's no excuse we will be able to give you. I don't believe sorry, Father, is going to get it done. All we will have is Jesus. Just as I am, Father, with that one plea, but let the blood of Christ was shed for me. That's all I got. That's all any of us have. We thank you, Father, for that freedom. Thank you for that freedom. It's the 
because of Christ that we have this. So we thank you, God. We praise you, we honor you, we glorify you in His Spirit. Barbecue.